Okay, so last video, we were talking about using the XYZ corners on each atom for any polyatomic molecule. And we said that you can find gamma 3n, and then once you subtract out your rotational and vibrational, or sorry, your rotational and translational motions, then you can get to your vibrations. And we said that for this water molecule, we get three vibrational modes, and then they have, that reduces down to uh, the sum of 2a1 plus B1. So having three irreducible representations means we, we have three vibrational modes and the vibrational modes themselves, uh, there's two of them with symmetry that corresponds to A1 and one of them that has symmetry that corresponds to B1. And uh, so whatever that picture we draw of a molecule, so you can imagine here's my water, my head is the oxygen and then we're doing this way. So if we have something that's symmetric, we might expect it to have a, a symmetry similar to A1. Um, so if you took my vibration and I did a, a C2 rotation, do I still have the same symmetry? Yes, right? So, um, so that would be 1-1, one, one, and then again, if you imagine I did an XZ uh, plane on my head in the, in the board, then it would also be 1. If we then mirror planed myself this way, it would be the same. So that, that's what I mean when a vibrational mode should have symmetry that we can then represent using an EREP. Um, so one I just showed you was uh, basically an A1 symmetry vibrational mode. But again, it's, it's not very easy. So the, the, my, what my hand motion just now, was so these, these were the hydrogens, they are not easily expressed using XYZ. So in this video, we talked a little bit about internal coordinates. So rather than using XYZ, we could make a different picture. So, and so what we're going to do instead, instead of having the XYZ, once we know the irreducible representation that we have, or even before, we could instead express it as the so-called internal coordinates if we have, let's see, a long bond stretching. So these are, uh, we call this delta R1. So this is just R would be along a bond. Getting, and the delta means it's getting bigger, getting smaller. So stretching, compressing, stretching, compressing. We have another bond, so R2. And then, in addition to bond stretching, we could also have an internal coordinate of theta, so delta theta. So there's bending and bond stretching. So this is, these are our internal coordinates. And we could use these also to instead express molecular motion. So for example, if we just look at our bond stretching, so delta R1 and delta R2, you can see that they're uh, related by symmetry, right? If we do a C2, you can move delta R1 onto delta R2. So we'll treat them as a group. So if we look at, here's my character table. So if I want to consider the symmetry of, I'll call this gamma red. And then for this, what we're treating here, we're looking again at the delta R1 and delta R2. So delta R1, delta R2. So because we're treating two things, under E, our basis set is two. And now, again, we're doing the same treatment where if it moves position, it's a zero. If it changes direction, it's minus one. So what I mean is if your bond elongation under your symmetry operation somehow becomes a bond compression, this would be a minus one, right? And then, but if it stays the same, but and it's in the same position, as in the atoms don't move, then this will be a plus one. And if it moves, it's a zero. So in this case, so it's a two, because we're treating two things. If we do a C2, these two bonds change position because they uh, flip, oh, they, yeah, they change position because the hydrogen's the move. So because of that, under C2, our character is going to be a zero. And then now if we look at our sigma xz in the plane of the board, these r1 and r2, they stay in the same position. They also don't change what they're doing. So because of that, this is going to be a 2, because we still have two things. And then lastly, if we do a sigma v in the yz plane going into the board, again, the hydrogen switch position, these two change positions, so this is going to be a 0. So if we then reduce it down, which I'll leave you to do, um, this means that gamma red is going to be equal to A1 plus B1. So we're saying that one of our, an, there's an A1 stretching mode, and then there's a B1 stretching mode, 
And we should be able to use these to visualize how the, the molecule stretches along the OH bonds. So there's OH bond stretching vibrations, which you already knew for, because you're a chemist. OK. And then lastly, what if we think about uh, gamma of our delta theta? So here, so imagine this is our theta. Again, we're thinking about whether the angle is getting bigger or getting smaller. So if it got smaller, that would be minus 1. If it got bigger, if it stays the same, it's, it's a plus 1. So here, if we're finding the character, we have, excuse me, so we have e, under E, it's 1 because we're looking at one angle. If we do a C2, flip around here, the theta stays in the same position because it's still looking at this angle in space. And it's not changing direction, so this is still a 1. If we do a sigma v in the plane, it still looks the same, this arrow going this way. So it's also a 1. If we do a sigma yz, this arrow still looks the same because these two arrows are flipping directions, so it's still look, an arrow that looks like this for this bending motion. So this is a 1. So this is going to be equal to a 1. So what we're saying is, for y, we have an a1 bending mode, OH bond stretching, we have an A1 mode and a B1 mode. And we should be able to uh, visualize what these look like um, uh, using a, a different technique. But you can see that we found all three of the vibrational modes that we got from this XYZ treatment um, using this internal coordinate system rather than the XYZ. So you can use either one, um, which this one is slightly easier. And then so in uh, starting next week, we'll talk about how we can use A1 and B1 and A1. So these are just labels right now, but we can use them to actually visualize what the vibrational, vibrations look like in space.